In the last video, we talked about setting up our drawing. In this one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to start importing some geometry. So in IES, we have several means of doing this. And these tools are up at the top here. We have a rectangle, prism, and we have polygon. We also have these tools over here, but used a bit less often. So I'm going to click on this shape setting, first of all. And it's going to give me this box. Now this box allows me to input some information before I draw. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to draw this area here, which as we have an entranceway, I'm going to presume that this is an entrance corridor. We have a plane, and we have a height. Now I'm going to set the height here as I don't know the height of the room, I'm going to set it as a three meter high room. To draw, what we're going to do is to the nearest box, and if we are, obviously, if you're working in the industry, you might want to have a slightly more detailed grid at this point, but if you're a student, this should be fine. And we're going to trace to the inside of the wall for the any externals, and then from the internals, we're going to go halfway in between. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a little while. Remember, we don't have to be exactingly accurate for this kind of job. And our first room is done. And we can see that that room has now been generated on the left-hand side. What I'm going to show you now is how we might look at this. So, at the top, we have the model viewer. And we can click on the model viewer to get a 3D impression of this building. We can see we've inputted our first shape here. We can also change the view to any one of the following. So exonometric, right, front, and back. Let's put it back into plan mode. So that was the polygon tool. Let's try using the prism tool. We have a room here, which for the sake of argument, I'm gonna call a living room. And using the rectangle tool, I'm going to be doing the same thing as before. So exterior walls, interior surface, interior walls, midway through. quickly building up the other geometry. The rectangle tool is quite useful for this. What I'm going to do is go from that corner to ensure that I get this correct. There we go. And finally, our last room. Oh, if we've made a mistake, so we've drawn this without giving it a name, we can just go to properties right click on properties and then we can rename that. Some people like to do all their renaming at the end and particularly if you're doing offices with a quite a repetitive cellular design then doing them at the end can be a um, batch way of doing it to speed things up but you can also for small builds like this just do them as you go. And finally let's call this one a bathroom. Let's have a look at our model in 3D before discussing why we're doing the interior and exterior surfaces. So here's our model. We've got our first story modeled. We haven't put our windows or doors in yet. If I wanted to, I can do something like I can turn the shadows on. I can turn the sun path on, which could be quite useful. And then for any time of year, I can move it about. Let's say we want to have a look at some summertime conditions. And we can see what the building looks like at then. So another method that might be useful if you're doing a repetitive design, say an office or cellular type space, is that instead of manually drawing out each room, is you draw instead the perimeter outline of the entire space and then use the separation tool 
in order to segregate up. So if I, and as I said, this is very common when you're doing things like offices, I would then select, and then I would use this tool here, draw partitions to divide the selected space. And I'll be greeted with this. Generate subspaces within the selected space. Generate new separate spaces. What I want to do is make sure that I'm generating new se separate spaces and I want to divide with partitions. Divide without partitions is useful if you're zoning for things like office spaces. What this allows me to do is if I start outside the box, I can draw a line and just like a cake, I can begin to cut the space up. Useful tip, you will generally select the room to the left and top when you're doing when you're doing this so starting if you got lots of spaces to cut up start from the right and work left way and counter and clockwise which can be quite helpful in speeding things up <laughs>